just pulled up at the first yard of the day um, driving out here I had uh, it's about a 15 minute drive to this yard and I've got one next to it and one probably uh, two minutes down the road from it but what I wanted to talk to y'all about is what do you do when you've got three yards that you have to drive you know 15 minutes or 20 minutes or something like that to get to um, you got to think about that when it goes into your pricing so what I had today was I've got one yard that's like hey go ahead and cut it until all the all the leaves fall off the tree you know maintain your regular schedule every two weeks um, the neighbor next door said uh, I think we're, we're just gonna be done for the year I said okay no problem with that um, you know we'll we'll catch back up if it if it comes down to you know they're gonna want to leave clean up they're gonna be you know of course paying for it um, so the other yard also canceled so I've I've driven out here for just the one cut now <coughs> When I price the yards, I, I always keep that in mind. You know, if, I, if I'm just cutting that one yard, I still need to make that feasible. I still need to make a profit off of it. So the the yards, even though they're right here in this small little area, it's out of my big area. Um, it's it's still the drive out here just for the one yard, and I've kept that in mind. Um, so we we're just going to be cutting this one yard today. You've seen it. It's a small little uh, the rental property. Um, we're gonna we're gonna cut it and we're gonna be heading back to my big bubble so it's just a small little bubble out here um, that's why you wanna you want to think about route density and also going out of your usual cutting area um, so always just keep that in mind when it comes down to your price and whatever so if you wind up getting a bunch of yards that are outside of your bubble just always keep that in mind. Um, sometimes you may not be cutting them all unless you're, unless you got them contracted. And I don't do contracts. I'm I'm very personal with most of my clients. Um, we talk on the phone, text back and forth, and stuff like that, and uh, meet up and talk in person. So, you know, always always just keep that in mind. Okay. I'm about to start this yard, but what I wanted to go ahead and do was, uh, I hadn't done this in a few hours, was hit some of the grease points on here. I've got the ones on the, on the front wheels. Got all three spindles. And then these right here for raising and lowering the deck. And then there's another one that's back there but it's it doesn't need to be greased as often so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is hit these grease points what I've already done I've taken this rag and just kind of clean this off get all the dirt and stuff off of them that way you're not pushing the dirt and and all the dust down into it when you put the grease to it so that's something you you need to you need to do Now my little grease gun is just something I went and bought from Advanced Auto Parts or something like that. You know, something I didn't have to spend a whole whole bunch of money on. Um, I use the Echo Red Armor Grease. Um, just I also use the Reco Echo Red Armor Two Cycle Oil for my mix gas. Uh, it's, so far, it's been an awesome product. I've really like the way it performs and keeps the engines clean so I, I figured might as well just use the the grease also so it's uh it's grease I mean it gets in there and it it keeps everything moving the way it should so